How's it going? I'm Anthony and these are stories of my life. Uh, for those of you just joining us for the first time, the reason I'm making these videos is kind of a cognitive therapy tool. Uh, taking some head injuries over the years have caused me to have some memory issues and the doctors said that this would probably be a good idea to preserve the memories I have as well as inspire some of you to give me feedback on them, maybe some details I've lost or even remind me of entire events that I may have forgotten. So yeah, you get the idea. At any rate, this next video, uh, I'm going to kind of go over my elementary school years, but the event I'm going to talk about took place in 1987, and I know it was 87 because I was nine years old. So with that said, uh, kindergarten, I was at the Gingerbread House on Lincoln Avenue. I don't think it's there anymore. First grade was at George Phelps Elementary, which I don't think is there anymore. don't remember much from there other than meeting a cool girl named Tara Shipman, had this froey, puffy blonde hair. She was awesome, loved her to death. Another girl named Kim Corden, who's now Kim Morrison, total sweetheart, loved her to death too. Um, I remember playing Uno on a picnic bench and then swimming in the pool out there. Other than that, no specific events. From there, for second grade, went over to Victoria Elementary in Riverside. And uh, I can remember a kid named Ben, a girl named Emily that I thought was pretty. That's it. From second grade third grade i remember my teacher was miss johnson don't remember anything else fourth grade however there's a few things that happened around this time um that was the year i took that national test thing i was already a year ahead of what i was supposed to be but uh, in fourth grade i don't know if they gave it out to everybody or to select kids but i took this national test and i covered everything from science math english blah 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 and my test scores ranged from like the top one and a half percent of the country to like the top six percent of the country, depending on what it was. But it, my average landed around the top four percent. My dad always said I had a photographic memory, so I was real good at, at recalling things. Ironic that I'm making this video, but uh, that's probably why I scored so high. But anyway, I remember thinking I was in trouble because I was at school. I got called into the principal's office. There was these school district bigwigs in there, suits, ties, you name it. Parents were sitting in there. I'm like, oh my God, I'm in trouble. So I get in there, waiting to get yelled at. And after the whole conversation they had with me, they wanted me to move up to my freshman year of high school. I'm like, what? I'm a fourth grader, you know? And uh, my parents, their rationale was, I already had behavioral issues as it was. Ha ha, go ahead, get your laughs in. And behavioral issues as it was, as well as uh, know, just a lot going on. But I was already a year ahead, and my parents didn't want me to move up to, to high school just to get picked on by all the older kids, because I'm some little kid who's up there with them. I get their rationale. Was it the best idea? In retrospect, maybe not, I don't know because I got picked on no matter what anyway because those behavioral issues have never gone away. Go ahead, get your laughs in. But, uh, so I ended up staying there and then fifth grade ended up in Miss Boucher's gate program, the gifted and talented education program for fifth and sixth grade. Right around fourth grade, uh, I was also playing soccer and Somewhere in around, it was third or fourth grade, I ended up playing on a soccer team with Joe Hudson. And I don't know if that's where I met their family or if I met them somewhere else, but at some point, Joe's mom started babysitting me, and uh, that was where I met Joe's brother, Jim. And Jim and I ended up becoming best friends at some point. He's my oldest, dearest friend. He's no longer with us. But uh, it's funny because Joe still blames me to this day for this uh, dent he's got in the side of his head. I didn't like Joe at the time, so I'm not surprised he did this, but he was kind of a ass, typical middle child thing. But apparently I kicked him and he went up against the door and hit a head on a doorknob and hurt him pretty bad. But And uh, he still blames me for this dent he's got there. He gives me a hard time about it every time I see him. And I could say that just because we're good friends this day. Um, but I, I used to get picked on a lot, and that's because I had behavioral problems, and I still do. And 
part of it stemmed from me learning I was adopted and the psychological issues that causes, just knowing that. For those of you that are not, it might be hard to understand, but when you find out you're adopted, there is this thing where you, it, it, it eats away at you. Like you feel unwanted, unloved, like you're a mistake, and it's a huge self-esteem hit. And so I had to deal with that. Plus, I had severe attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, severe. So I don't know if my mother had done drugs or drank or something while she was pregnant with me, but it is, it is what it is. My ADHD was so bad that I was actually recommended to go to uh, Loma Linda University's medical center for behavioral observation. And I was there for two weeks. They studied me in every scenario you can imagine and even used that footage to train other doctors on ADHD. And we even met a doctor at one point in time that actually recognized the name, my name as one of the children in the video that he had seen. And so that was interesting as well. Um, but yeah, I got picked on a lot by just about everybody you can imagine at the school, uh, with the exception of Jim, for example. Um, but to give you an idea, like one of those stories, one of those people, his name was Dennis Lyons. And I can't really say anything bad about Dennis Lyons because everybody that, everybody else that knew Dennis loved him. Like the people that were his friends loved him. So he was good to all of them. So I am sure I probably said things or did things that made him hate me. And I, who knows, I might've even started it. So I, I'm willing to accept that. But Dennis was relentless in coming at me with it. And uh, one year I was on a soccer team called the Riverside Blasters, blue and red color. Our coach was Octavio Zambrano. Google him. He actually was the coach for the LA Galaxy and the Canadian national team for a while. And uh, But we, didn't, I was supposed to play basketball, and I was assigned to Dennis's team. But my soccer team from the season prior just kept winning and winning and winning and winning and winning. And we went on to different brackets and whatever else. We ended up being the first team from Riverside ever going as far as we did. Got to meet the mayor, Ab Brown, blah, blah, blah. But... I don't know. Anyway, it cut into the basketball season, so I never really got to play with them except one or two games. But I ended up getting a trophy at the end of the season because I guess they did well. And Dennis, I remember, freaking yelled at me and, you don't deserve that trophy. You were never there. You didn't do anything for us and blah, 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 blah. If anything, you hurt us and this and that. Anyway, um, I tried with Dennis to be friends with him. I even invited him to my birthday party. I found out later his mother forced him to go because I guess they knew I was the awkward kid. I don't know. But anyway, Dennis ended up inviting me to his birthday party. And so I get there and all of his friends are there. And he's a wealthy kid, so basketball courts in the house and whatever. They're all out playing basketball and they won't play with me. Nobody. They won't include me in any of their activities, nothing. And it culminated to when they're out on the basketball courts and they kept kicking me off the court and I really was forced to just sit and hang out with Dennis's little sister. I don't remember her name, but at some point Dennis finally just got irritated, came up to me and started yelling at me. Why are you even here? What are you even doing here? Nobody even wants you here. Only reason we invited you is because you invited me to yours and my mother forced me to go and forced me to invite you in return and this and that. Oh God, he was so mean. Finally got to the point where I just, I was going to leave and I was about to walk home. I was actually walking out. It was like a 12 mile walk. And, um, but his dad saw me, got me in his car and drove me home. And, um, interesting thing about Dennis is some years later, he's in college and I'm in the military and I'm having a conversation with my best friend at the time. And we're watching Billy Madison and it's that scene where Adam Sandler is talking or calls up Crazy Eyes and apologizes for being a jerk to him in high school. And Crazy Eyes is just, oh, oh, okay, all right, thank you. And then puts his lipstick on and then crosses his name off of his hit list. And that scene was funny, but then I turned to Brandon and I says, you know, if you had a hit list, who would be on it? And so he labels off some names of people he'd probably put on it if he ever did that. He says, he asked me, who would be on your hit list? I said, oh God, there'd be so many people. Says, Does anybody stand out though? And I said, you know what? probably Dennis Lyons. 
I said he'd probably be the name at the top of my list. And I told him what happened, you know, same as I told you. And then lo and behold, the next day, my father calls me. And he's still friends with some of the, you know, Davis or Dennis's family circle. And he says, Dennis died last night. I said, what? He said that, I guess Dennis was at a party in college, uh, at a, maybe his frat house or something. And then uh, wasn't feeling well and went to go lay down and then never woke up. Just it was the most random thing. I don't know what the toxicology reports or anything said or autopsy, whatever. But when my dad kind of gave me the timeline he was told, it all happened at exactly the same moment that I was having that conversation with my best friend. So just, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not going to speculate on that, but that was, that was my elementary years. Let's see somewhere around there. Also, we had the challenger explosion. That was a big deal. Um, everybody was looking forward to space and all that, but, and then, uh, my fifth and sixth grade years, I was, I was a bad kid too. I can remember at one point in time throwing rocks at cars driving by and everybody was doing it. But of course I'm the kid nobody liked. So when it came to ratting people out, all eyes on me, but, and I wouldn't rat anybody else out. I kept my mouth shut. So nobody else got in trouble. I was the one that took all the blame. So yeah, I got in big trouble for that one. But anyway, so this next event took place in 1987. And at some point at home, things started getting rocky. And I didn't understand why. All I realized was that every time my mother drank this particular type of drink, her behavior changed and she essentially became a bitch. And it caused, you know, the, that behavioral change caused fights with my dad, fights with me, and at some point, one morning, my dad goes to work and it's still early. My mom takes me to the grocery store and we get a couple things, but two things that we did get were these gigantic bottles of wine. Bring it back, she puts them in the fridge and then she heads off to the bathroom. So now I'm thinking, oh my God, my mom's got two huge bottles of wine. It's still like seven o'clock in the morning. My dad's at work. He won't be back till late. And I'm going to have to deal with this all by myself all day long. So I'm nine years old. And I just decide, you know what? I'm going to do something about it. I went into the kitchen. No joke. Grabbed both bottles of wine and poured them out in the sink. Huge bottles of wine poured them both out and I thought I remember thinking to myself now what do I do with the bottles do I throw them away no I just put them back in the fridge and I realized right after I poured them out that I probably made a mistake but now I had to own it so I was like okay well if I gotta own it I'll put them back in the fridge I want my mom to physically pick up an empty bottle because she's gonna ask me about it in retrospect I probably should have filled them up with water or peed them or something, but you know, so whatever. That would have been hilarious, but I didn't. And um, so sure enough, my mom comes out of the bathroom. I can hear her open up a cabinet. I can hear her, her take a glass out of the cabinet. I can hear her open the fridge. I hear her pick up one of her bottles and then all of a sudden she yells, what the, Anthony? Yeah, mom, what happened to my wine? I poured it out and I hear the kitchen door or the refrigerator door slam shut. You what? I poured them out. And then she comes charging into the room with me and she's fuming. And, uh, what the hell did you do that for? I don't remember what my words were, but I, as politely and as nicely as I could tried to explain to her that her personality, blah, 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 when she drinks this and I don't like the problems it causes. She really just took it as I called her a bitch, you know, and she just wound up, boom, slapped me as hard as she could across the face. 
the worst part about it was that she didn't even get to recoil her hand before I hit her back. She just, pow, as soon as she hit me, pow, right back. Caught her across the side of the face. And my dad had always told me, if somebody hits you, hit them back immediately. Don't even hesitate, just hit them back. Do not let somebody hit you. Because that's just, that's BS. You do not, you just hit them back. You know, even if you're gonna get your butt kicked, do not tolerate it. So that's exactly what I did. And you know, especially if it's for a BS reason. So that's what I did, I hit my mom right back. And um, she held the side of her face and she just was in shock. Eyes are as big as dinner plates, mouth them ever being partially open. And then she ended up sitting down on the couch and just staring off into space. And I kind of leaned down like, mom, are, are, you, are you okay? And she says, she's like this and she's, go to your room. I'm like, oh. So I took off, went to my room and uh, just sat on my bed. And the, I left the door cracked so I could hear what was going on. Sure enough, I hear her pick up the phone. It was a rotary so I could hear her dial on it. She calls my dad. And I hear her talking, but she's making it a point to talk low. And I'm like, crap. And then she hangs up the phone. She doesn't come back down the hallway or anything. So, okay, well, I shut the door. My dad doesn't get home till late. My mom never brought me water, food, anything like that. Just uh, every now and then I go out and use the bathroom. And my dad comes home and he comes walking in and he says, so what happened? I explained to him what happened, just as I told you. He says, you know what? I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. But you also shouldn't do that to your mother. Oh, I didn't know there was a caveat. <laughs> okay. He says, but like I said, I don't blame you either. He says, I'll go talk to her. So he goes out and talks to my mom. And I guess my mom expected him to flip out on me, and beat my ass or something. I don't know. But he didn't. So my mom flipped out on him, screaming, yelling at him. And he pointed out that I had some good points and whatever else. But uh, yeah. And it got me thinking, you know, it, the way I tell the story, it sounds like it was the first time this happened. But I was nine years old. And I realized that to get a nine-year-old to the point where he is willing to, to take that hit, literally and figuratively, knowing that when he pours out those two bottles of wine, that what's going to happen, or potentially could happen anyway... There had to have been a lot of run up to it. You know, there had to be something going on that that finally was just the straw that broke the camel's back. And where I, I decided to do something. And then to get slapped like that and to recoil it so fast. I don't know. Maybe that was the first time. Maybe not. I don't remember. But yeah. And I didn't know that this was the beginning. So. Yeah, things get a lot more fun from here on out. Anyway, that's the story. I appreciate you watching. Um, like I said, some of these are going to be fun. Some of these are going to be sad. There we go. Thank you again.